Hey guys, just wanted to drop a quick update. Uh, I haven't been making many YouTube videos because I don't have a helmet camera, or I didn't. I've bought a GoPro because I lost my Sony X3000 on a hike and fly up a mesa somewhere and looked around, looked around, but could not find it. Had some really beautiful flights over the last uh, couple weeks. Had some really good weather in Amarillo. And uh, here is a little video of what I did get from that hike and fly. This right here is what I do not want to land in if I can help it. The eagles are finding some lift this morning. Those guys are liars. I swear they can find lift at night. So they're finding as much lift as they can off of the smaller hills beneath me. And they're coming over here to get in the band, the lift band from this mesa. Okay, I found a piece of ground that doesn't have too many cactuses and yucca pl plants across it. And I found a little rock that's flat going down the hill that will support my weight securely. This is probably gonna be my best bet. I need to get my wing out, the wind is uh, kicking up. This is where I ended up landing. I was really happy. It was a bit of a sled ride. I stayed in the lift band for just a little bit, but didn't feel comfortable trying to do any scratching because I didn't want to land in the trees. So I actually spot landed exactly where you can see my harness. And that to me is a really good landing for someone who's not that great at free flight yet. And I did manage to take a few paramotor flights the next weekend. I've been doing a little bit of maintenance, just replacing lines, little stuff, nothing big. But test flights are important because sometimes things happen on a test flight. And, you know, it, sometimes things happen when you're not on a test flight. Well, you can see right here, I'm smiling. And of course I have no audio because I'm terrible at this, but I'm smiling because I kind of knew that there might be a problem, right? There's no stress, but I always feel like if I'm stressed out when my engine quits, then I've made a very poor plan. That's a mistake. This was the culprit. I just think this is the worst type of connector to use on a paramotor. But I haven't seen any paramotors that don't use these type of connectors to connect to the coil. This was my second engine out. Again, not a big deal. One thing you'll notice is I, I pull in the, uh, the 360 camera. And so I'm flying parallel with the runway. I do check to make sure that there aren't any planes. Uh, and, I, and I'm saying this to the camera, but I'm basically saying I'm going to try and put it down uh, right where it's on the runway. I, I wanted to stay out of the mud. This stupid GoPro is in like hyperlapse mode, which gives me nothing usable. But you'll see, I'm not used to it, the height of it, and so it catches on my helmet. And I got to where I rarely caught anything on my Sony. But I'm going to have to figure something out with this because I just do not like how high the GoPro sits up on the helmet. My final flight of the day was kind of a treat especial for the Texas Panhandle. I spent a lot of time just foot dragging and doing cool stuff that you can do in very butter smooth laminar air. Really enjoyed the flight. I just wanted a chill flight that day anyways. And the carb wasn't running as good as I wanted. But I decided with the two engine outs I'd had, I was going to uh, adjust that in the next couple days because I saw that there were some good opportunities to fly coming up. Interesting thing is I noticed on my way in that there was a highway patrolman waiting in the parking lot of the airport. And it turned out it was a real nice guy. He was interested in paramotoring. And so we sat and talked about it for about 30 minutes and introduced him to the cult. And he gave me his business card and said, if I ever have any problems or have an engine out or something and need a ride just to give him a call because he lives in that town and where he'd have someone else come pick me up. And I thought that was really, really nice. I tell you what, these people in Vega, they've offered to let me have gatherings at this airport of paramotor pilots. It's just an extremely paramotor friendly group of people over there. And I, I felt very welcome in that area. All right. See if we can get one launch on this goofy GoPro.
next day, I actually figured out how to get some audio into this GoPro. Um, unfortunately, it was still pretty terrible audio. It's a work in progress, right? All three flights from Andy's house were pretty awesome, but I did make one mistake on the first flight. Pop quiz. Tell me in the comments, what was the mistake you're about to see? hating this GoPro so far um okay so Andy and I pair waited a little bit it was still a little rowdy we decided we wanted a we decided we wanted a nice flight easy going right easy flight easy life and it's calmed down a lot now hell it might even be a forward launch now <laughs> Andy was hand kiting and got plucked a little bit had to let go of his wing to keep from coming off the ground when we were first out here. So it was definitely a little thermic. I oh, know, I think this will come out real nice. Last two flights I've had just had terrible audio problems. Slide this bad boy out just a little bit. Man, covered in dust. You just cannot get a good picture that isn't covered by freaking West Texas dust. How do you do it, Anthony Bella? How do you get such pretty pictures with that West Texas freaking dust everywhere? And I know it's dusty where you're at, brother. Oh, he's going for the mythical. Legendary Amarillo forward launch. Here he goes. Oh, that's clean. Picking up dust. Andy actually had a minor emergency after takeoff. It was nothing that really affected the flight of the wing but his trim tab got stuck under one of his J bars. So he just made a loop here around the field and landed. I had thought that he, see, he had been working on his carburetor too. I assumed that he was doing what I did and had to do umpteen launches and landings to get the carburetor dialed in. But no, it was that uh, issue. And since he didn't have a whole lot of time to fly that night, he just stayed on the ground. Um, so he just had a very short flight. As for me, you know I had to fly somewhere, so I decided to go around the uh, floating mesa and just kind of cruise around for a bit. Now we've got some clouds on the horizon. We're going to lose sun. It's going to should make the air pretty pretty soft. It's what I want. Is this good content? Looking right into the sun, huh? Is this good content? The air is not quite glassed off yet. I'd love to own this little Mesa right here, this old one that's real ground down. I would kill to own a Mesa like that. Get rid of all, man, I would I would get rid of all that damn mesquite, have my own little free flight training hill. It'd be amazing. It's far enough away from the other structure, it's not going to get too much crap off of it. Man, how cool would that be? You could manicure that up a little bit. Let's see what kind of ridge we can see. So it's coming from this direction. Hey, what's that? Got a critter. Yeah, I'm not 
feeling much. I'm heavy. I'm a fatty. I think that was a coyote. I think coyotes are pretty. Oh, there he is. There he is right there. Run, coyote, run. I've got a nice big open area for that wind to come into it. Oh, yeah. Right here. Should be actually more on that side because it should be coming in this direction from the north. Little wonder wind here. I'm just too heavy to take advantage of it. Wish I hadn't put as much gas in it. I was liking that gas. I was liking that weight when it was super nasty, chunky earlier. This is kind of where the land of the mesas starts. And as you go west into New Mexico, you just see more and more and larger, more grand mesas. I love mesas. I think they're awesome looking. I've always liked them. I've always enjoyed the desert structures carved in the landscape. They're just remnants of the Caprock. This is actually a place that you, travelers can launch from this little triangle, but beware of thermals. It's, uh, <laughs> you, as you can see, it's very dark. Um, it's, it's very easy to get your wing nasty if you put it in the wrong place because there's a lot of uh, old asphalt there, but uh, it's absolutely a thermal trigger. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of thermal still on it just from the heat rising off of it. It just gets hot as hell. That's where I turn my angel on its top. Just wrecked the hell out of it there, taking off like an idiot too early in the day, right off of a, right on top of the thermal trigger. Just an editor's note, there's also rattlesnakes in the thick grass around there. Three hundred, probably thirty pounds. I, I'm not feeling a lot of thermals <laughs> on the 23 meter wing around before it gets here. It's giving me nice shade, but also making it where I can't see electric lines. So I'm gonna play it safe. Keep some altitude, even though I know the area. It's not worth the, not worth the risk. There was an accident down here and they had life, the, the Lifestar chopper go and get it. So definitely keep an eye out for that guy. Anytime there's an accident on this road, they fly right down it. The hospital is literally like straight ahead of me. But I've got to temper my, my desire to get some altitude with the fact that I don't penetrate the air near as much at altitude, especially as I'm coming up to the cap rock here. Air gets compressed, it's a little faster. Let's do our final. Try and come in right over the top of these. headed on vacation next week so probably going to be up in Grand Junction for a little bit and then I'm going to head to the point of the mountain to see if I can finish my P2 certification hope all you guys are doing great thanks for watching peace